Welcome to the Marketing Study Guide. In this video, I'm going to look at the five key financial metrics for marketing. The ones I'm going to be looking at are net profit contribution, return on marketing investment, payback period, internal rate of return, and net present value. Okay, I've set up an example here where there are three different uh, marketing projects that we might be looking at and I've got a whole series of financial metrics at the bottom which I want to explain what they are. This is a common situation for marketers where we are required to work out the the cost of the campaign. So here's an advertising campaign designed for repositioning. Here's a, a, a new product that's coming out and here is some sort of market uh, coverage expansion. So as we can see, we've got five, ten, and twenty million dollars. Probably the hardest part of the whole exercise is we need to forecast the uh, the future and look at the, the the profits that will stem from each of these campaigns. So uh, we've done that. We've got two million dollars ongoing for repositioning. We've got money coming in, increasing and then declining as it goes through the product life cycle, and we've got a, a growth in international market till we hit maturity and then it's an ongoing um, value there. Now from time to time because we're asking for in this case across the three projects 35 million dollars it's a lot of money so often we're asked to construct as marketers construct a series of financial metrics and I've got them uh, included down the bottom here so we can work out and see what they are and see how they uh, are determined. Fortunately in Excel we can do these uh, calculations quite easily. Like I said the challenge is actually coming up with the 10-year the forecast in this case. Okay the first thing we do is simply work out well, what's what's the profit. Okay in this case I've simply simply got a sum of all of these things here so we've got five going out, two coming in for the next 10 years as, as you can see 20 million in revenue five million in costs and therefore the net profit contribution over that whole period is fifteen million dollars and we do the same thing here this just adds up the positive revenue numbers which adds up to twenty and this one has a lot more to forty we take away the, the cost and we get a net profit contribution fifteen ten and twenty so that gives us one measure of gee which one's the best if we just look at uh, profit contribution, we go, okay, international expansion, that's going to give us 20 million. That seems the best so far. Okay. The second number we look at is a return on marketing investment. What money did we put at risk and what was the payback? This one here, we've invested 5 million and we've got back 15. So that's three times so that's a 300 percent return this one here we've invested 10 got back 10 invested 20 got back 20 so we've doubled our money so we've made a hundred percent return okay so that takes into account the percentage of money or proportion of money we had at risk so so far we've got gee this is good because that's 20 million dollars that's a lot of money um, this one's second good because it's 15 it's still a lot of money but we're getting three times return on our our investment, so that seems a lot a lot better. Okay, the next one is what's called a payback. How quickly do we recover the initial investment? This one here, you know, we've put up, uh, you know, five million dollars. So we get back two, we get back two, and in the third year we've got back by that stage six million dollars. So we've recovered our money. So our payback period is actually three years. This one, it actually takes us five years. One, two, three, four, five. At that stage, we've actually recovered the $10 million. So it takes us a bit longer. And then finally, here, it's a number of years. So it's a little bit longer again. So in the middle of the sixth year, we get, it, get all our money back. Obviously, what we're looking at from a marketing perspective is to maximize net profits or profit contribution, but do it efficiently 
which is when you put less money at risk, you get the return. So that one stands out there. And to recover the money as quickly as possible. So again, looking at this, the repositioning is getting that money back in three years. An international expansion is a longer term thing. It's going to take us six years just to be back to where we were. Okay, so that's another consideration. Okay, then I've got down here the internal rate of return. Now, the way to look at this is to think about, gee, if we were putting this money in the bank, what return would we get on the money? Okay, now it gets a little bit complicated and we have to use an Excel formula uh, primarily because um, as money comes back in, it gets reinvested. So as this $2 million comes back in, that money gets reinvested in the business. So we've got this double compounding effect. So it's, it's not actually a simple calculation, but fortunately, Excel makes it look very easy. I'll just show you the formula button. Okay, I've just brought up the, the function button at the top here. And as you can see, it's a pretty straightforward calculation. So I'm just going to do it quickly. I've cleared that cell. So the formula is, if you just watch up here, it's just equal, and we type in the letters IRI, IRR, sorry, and then bracket, and then I just run my cursor over all the numbers, close the brackets, and we have our, our formula there. Already done, and it says this campaign because will return on average 38%, which is obviously pretty impressive. Okay, so I do this, the same thing there. And as we can see, this repositioning campaign is really starting to stand out. It's making the second amount of most of net money. It's got a three times return. It has a much faster payback. And because of that, you're able to compound and reinvest that money a lot faster. And as a consequence, it makes almost a 40% return. Okay, far superior to these two. Those two are both attractive projects. Okay, but uh, nowhere near as good as this. So you definitely do this one, and you probably look to do those two depending on the whole budget of the organization. The last one here is what's called the net present value. Um, I've got a separate video on that, but basically any net present value greater than zero. Uh, which means it exceeds the company's discount rate or hurdle rate is worthwhile doing. And these are well in excess of zero, which means that all of these three investments would generate a greater return for the organization than its normal business operations. So if we took that $35 million and invested it in the normal business operations or invested it in these things, then collectively, if we did these three projects, would actually, if you add those up, they're roughly almost $12 million, we would be $12 million better off by undertaking these three campaigns rather than putting that $35 million back into normal. Okay, so how do we calculate that? Again, I'll clear that cell. Got a blank function box up there. Okay, watch the function button up the top here. What I'm going to do is put the equal sign in, net present value, and I'm going to put the brackets in there. And down here in the prompter, it's saying it's asking me for the rate. Now, I could type in the rate, but I actually have included it in the spreadsheet. So I'm just going to click on it. So that's picking up the 10%. I then put comma. And I only want to calculate the net present value of future money. So I'm going to ignore year zero at this stage and just highlight all the others. Close brackets. Now, I've done the formula, but I haven't included today's $10 million, so I'm going to put plus and go to $10 million. Now I've done plus because that number is as, as a negative. Just make sure it comes off. It's a, it's That $10 million should be a negative in the calculation. So as you can see, it gives me a $2 million plus better return than putting that $10 million in normal business operations. Okay, so anything positive here is good. And just as a last piece of information, um, the internal rate of return, if you were to use it as your discount rate, it would set your net present value to zero. So I'm going to actually change the formula here. So it's going to be plus, 
and I'm going to pick up the the rate of return for the market expansion and I've changed that uh, as you can see and it actually brings back this range of cash flows to zero okay so there's a little trick you can do to make sure that your your formulas are working correctly but there are other videos online that you can have a look at for me